power. The power here is 3, so I'm going to use the formula, 1 over n plus 1, x to the n plus 1. And I'm, I'm, this is our first example, so I'm going to really take my time through this one, show all the little pieces. But as we proceed, I won't. So I'm going to be doing 1 over n plus 1, so 3 plus 1, x to the 3 plus 1. Right? That's what I'm doing there. Am I done with that first term? Yes? Okay, moving on. Plus 4, bringing it along for the ride because it's a constant in front. And then times, here we go, n is 1 half, right? So 1 over 1 half plus 1, x to the 1 half plus 1. And I continue. Minus, Minus 1 over, what's n for us on that last one here? 3, three halves. So I'm going to go 3 halves plus 1, x to the 3 halves plus 1. And then at the very end, I'm going to say plus C. Now, if you have not done a lot of this, okay, if you, this is maybe like your first or second time doing this, you want to make sure that you take your time to get all these things right. And with time and practice, you'll be able to do this all mentally, probably. You can just do it in your head. And if you're ready at that point, good for you. All right, let's do some arithmetic. This first one's going to be kind of, kind of basic here. We have 2 thirds, then we have 1 over 4, right? 1 fourth x to the 3 plus 1 is 4, so 1 fourth x to the 4th. I'll combine those two fractions out front together in a second. What about this? 1 half plus 1. Three halves. Three halves. So this is where it's going to come down to like your comfort level with fractions. You've got to get comfortable with them, all right? So I'm not going to really ever show you this again, but just a quick way to add fractions. If you've got simple fractions like that, 1 half plus 1, you could write as 1 over 1, right? We all know you could like get a common denominator and do all that, but one quick way you can always do it is do this number times this number, which is what? 1 times 1, 1, and then the symbol here plus, and then this one times this one, which is 2, and then you put it over this one times this one, which is 2, and what's that? 3 halves. That's a quick, like a quick um, Band-Aid for your fraction deficiencies, if you have any, okay? There you go. So that's what I'm doing. Three halves. So this becomes four times, now we have a little issue here. This is three halves, right? But it's one over three halves, so that really means two-thirds. So I'm flipping the fraction, doing the reciprocal, two-thirds, and then x to the, we already did that, right? Three halves? Moving on, all right, 3 halves plus 1, 3 halves plus 1 over 1, I multiply here, that gives me 3, plus I multiply here, that gives me 2, and I go over 2, and that's 5 halves, right? Or 2, two and a fifth, that would be, that would be the mixed number version, 2 and a fifth, is that what you're saying? Like 2 and a fifth, like that? Sure, that's what I meant. Okay. So we're good with this, 5 halves. This is 5 halves, but it's 1 over, one over 5 halves. Oh, you meant 2 fifths. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You're already going to the flip. Okay, so this is 1 over 5 halves. Flip it, you get 2 fifths. X to the 5 halves. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I misunderstood you. I thought, didn't he just tell us not to write it like that? <laughs> well, and I was thinking, why is, he doing, why is he saying exactly what I said not to do? But now I get you. Okay. All right. We're good? Plus C. Plus C. And then we have a little more arithmetic. So let's just try and clean up some stuff here. When we do this, there's multiple ways you can do that, right? But what's it turn out to be? Mm. One sixth. So multiply across, right? Two over 12, reduce it. One sixth. Right? Two over 12 is one sixth. How about this one? You could do that as 4 over 1. You multiply 8 thirds straight across. So plus 8 thirds, <coughs> x to the 3 halves. This one we don't have to do anything with. Plus c. And that's it. There's nothing else to do. 
Now, you can always check your work, right? How do you check your work? Perfect. Take the derivative, right? And if you take the derivative, you should get back this. All right. Any questions? Can you all read that up there like that? Is that all right? All right, what do you see that's different in this problem than the previous one? You've got a big old fraction there, right? So can, can I just do power rule, power rule, power rule, power rule, do all power rules up there, and then just divide that by power rule on that and just do them separately like that? Yes. Cannot, okay? Just for the same reason that if you have f of x times g of x, you can't just do the antiderivatives of each one separately? It doesn't work for multiplication. It doesn't work for division either. Pardon me? Is that basis that you can do separate? Yeah, so what we will do instead is we'll realize that there's one. Is that me? I'm borrowing somebody's iPhone, and I can't figure out how to turn off the freaking ringer on this thing. What do I do here? Hold on. So I apologize. This won't happen when I get a real phone. <laughs> there we go. Okay. <sighs> I shouldn't say anything. My phone's dead, so. Yeah, I kind of like the iPhones. All right, so here we go. Um, what I don't like is the control that Apple has over you. That's what I don't like. All right, so what I'm going to do is split this up. I have a single term here. I have how many terms in the top? There's four of them up there, right? So I'm, I'm going to just do some algebra. I'm going split to this, split this into four separate terms. Um, and why don't I go to rational exponents on everything now? So 2x over what? What's cube root of x as a rational exponent? x to the one third. That's what the cube root means. And if you've forgotten, That's the rule I'm using, and there's a more general rule. Bless you. There. Neither one of those. Musing? Pardon me? What did you call that? Musing? Uh, did I say that? I thought I heard that. Oh. Um, no, this is a more general rule. This is, this is if you just have like a third root or a fifth root or a fourth root, you can convert it here. But if the thing in here is raised to a power also, you can use this. All right, so I keep going, um, plus, because there's a plus right there, and then x to the uh, 1 half, right, over x to the 1 third again. And then I keep going minus, that's just 4, so I'm going to put 4, x to the 1 third again. And then finally, x cubed over x to the 1 third again. So what I've done, and it's, it's is only working because I have a single term in the denominator, right? It's the only reason this is working. I can split it now into four separate terms, and now I can try and find the antiderivative of those separately, but I first need to actually use some properties of exponents to clean these up, right? So what is x over x to the one-third, and that's x to the first power, right? Two-thirds, right? You subtract. One minus a third is two-thirds. So I'm going to work kind of quick through this. This is two x to the two-thirds plus, all right, here, you're taking a half, and you are subtracting what? A third. a third, and then you can play that same game. Three, two, you're subtracting, right? Over six, so that's one-sixth, one so that's x to the one-sixth, minus, now what about this one? There's not an x up there. This is an important, it's a subtle thing, but it's an important thing. You, you cannot leave that x to the one-third down there. So bring it up and make it x to the negative one-third. All right? Your property for power rule only works if your x is up in the numerator. It does not work if it's downstairs in the denominator. We good with that? 
And then the last one, 3 minus a third is, what is it? 8 ninths. Uh, 8 thirds, sorry. 8 thirds. 8 thirds. Yes? So 9 minus 1 over 3. Plus eight, uh, x to the 8 thirds. All right. So would you agree with me that up to this point we have done no calculus? This is all algebra? OK. Now the calculus part, power rule. Capital F of x should be equal to 2's coming for the ride. Now let's see if we can do this. 1 over, and I'm going to do that power plus 1, right? 2 thirds plus 1? What's 2 thirds plus 1? 5 thirds. Now I'm going to have, I'm going to put the reciprocal there on the next step, all right? And then x to the what? Because I have to add 1 to that power. So 5 thirds again. All right, plus, now this one. I do 1 over, and then I have to do this power plus 1. What's 1 sixth plus 1? 7 sixths. x to the 7 sixths. Then the minus 4 times, because it's coming along for the ride. Now I'm working with this. My power is negative 1 third. So I'm going to do 1 over. Be careful with that negative. What's negative 1 third plus 1? 2 thirds. x to the 2 thirds. And then my last one plus 1 over <coughs> 8 thirds plus 1. 11 thirds, x to the 11 thirds plus c. So are there any questions on that? And now I'll reciprocate all these. So when I flip this, right, it becomes 3 fifths. And what will 3 fifths times 2 be? 6 fifths. x to the 5 thirds plus, all right, I, I just have to flip this one, right? That's pretty clean. 6 sevenths, x to the 7 sixths. This one, when I flip it, it becomes 3 halves, right? So I'm going to be doing negative 4 times 3 over 2. And there's multiple ways you can look at this. If I look at that as 4 over 1, I just multiply straight across. I would get 12 over 2, wouldn't I? Which is 6. So it would be minus 6. 6x six to the 2 thirds. And if, if I'm sitting here and I'm insulting you because you're like, I know how to do fractions, and I'm sorry, OK? But in my, in my experience, these are the little things that students have trouble with. So I want to make sure everybody understands you need to be able to work with fractions here, or else this stuff's going to be a headache. All right, next one, 3 elevenths, right? x to the 11 thirds plus c. Box it up, we're done. What do you think? OK? In your homework, you'll have an opportunity to practice some more, all right? By the way, if you have the bonus question, anyone else? OK, please turn it in now. On the homework solution videos for the section 3.6, there was a problem at the end that I offered as a bonus to be turned in today. But you have to have watched that video to all the way through to the very end. It was, it was the, you didn't do the last, last problem then. This was 48. Number 48 was bonus. All right. Yeah, I need it now, not later. OK, let's look at this one. This next one is not, you know, it's the third example I'm showing you. It doesn't mean like it's harder than the previous ones. 
This is about just recognition, all right? You look at that, you say, all right, well, I have two terms, right? Sine x and then secant x, tangent x, those are two terms, so I can do them individually. And if you look at sine, do you know the antiderivative of sine? Is it cosine or negative cosine? It's negative cosine of x, right? There's really no work I'm having to do here, I'm just looking. And then secant x times tangent x, I cannot do them separately, right? But secant x tangent x is the derivative of secant x. So I just put plus secant x plus c, box it up, and I'm done. That was pretty clean, right? All right, this next one, I'm very curious to see what, what y'all want to do with this. My other class at 9 a.m., we had, we had quite a bit of fun with this one. So what are you seeing? Can you explain? The, the suggestion is to split this into two fractions. I believe what you're saying is just rewrite the problem as 2 over 1 plus x squared plus x squared over 1 plus x squared. Am I, am I interpreting what you were saying correct? OK, so why were you thinking that? Artan. Artan. OK, so the idea, what was your name? Crystal is saying that she recognizes that that 1 plus x squared on the bottom was like tied into the arctan, right? And that that was something that I've said you need to kind of recognize. And so splitting it like that, sure, I have no problem with that. In fact, this first one, because that 2 is a constant, I can just put the 2 out front and rewrite that as 1 over 1 plus x squared. Do you agree? And then if I look at this, I don't have to care about that because it's tacked on. I can just bring it. And the antiderivative of that just by itself is arctan x, right? So I agree. This is good. We're, going, we're getting somewhere. But that's a problem because that is not arctan. Arctan did not have that formula. The formula for arctan had a 1 up top, right? So you cannot do this, though. All right? You can't pull the x squared out and do this. Because there's a product here. This is an x. Sorry, it's x squared, but it's not a constant, right? So it's not just going to come along for the ride. You can't undo these like this. So you're stuck. What's that? Do you use a rule? Uh, well, yeah, that's what. Uh, quotient rule. Well, that's if we were taking the derivative, but we're not. We're doing backwards. Yeah. So, all right. <clears throat> so this is exactly the same path my other class went down. So let's see if y'all can. They never got it, but let's see if, if y'all can figure something else out. Can we just like put two, x, two plus x squared over one and then one over one plus x squared and multiply it? So you're saying, right, two plus x squared over one times one over one plus x squared like that? Mm -hmm. That is that, I agree. Mm -hmm. But then are you suggesting we do these separately? You can't. So yes, you can do this. You can split this, but you can't just then say, you know, what's the antiderivative of that? Oh, well, that's just x, uh, sorry, 2x plus a third x cubed, right? That would be the antiderivative of this. And then you can't say times arctan x. And why wouldn't this work? Well, trust me, if you take the derivative of that, you're not going to get back that, okay? It's not going to happen. So that's no go. This is correct algebra, but it doesn't get us anywhere. This is correct algebra. I'm not sure if it's going to get us anywhere yet. Well, I, I know, but I'm not going to tell you. OK, so we've gone one path, kind of got stuck. Anything else? Yeah, multiply by a form of one. Multiply by what? Form of one. I, wouldn't help with it. I don't know. The suggestion is to possibly multiply by a one. But what is that one, right? Maybe. So you want me to start, you don't want me to look at this. You want me to start back up here? Correct. And you want me to, so from up there, I'll just put a bar here. You want me to say f of x is equal to 1 plus 1? 